Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the alternate horror. And happy Halloween to you all. As we come tradition around here, let's talk about something spooky. And I think a great topic for today is H.P. Lovecraft. For those who don't know, Howard Phillips Lovecraft was an American horror writer who was born and spent most of his life in Providence, Rhode Island. Lovecraft was unappreciated in his time, with the stories only ever published in cheap pulp magazines, and he was never able to make enough money from writing to support himself. After his death, however, H.P. Lovecraft's popularity exploded. Lovecraft is most famous for his Cthulhu Mythos, a shared horror universe where humanity is at the mercy of cosmic horrors ranging from evil cults to uncaring alien species and indescribable gods called the Great Old Ones who could drive people mad just by waking up. Now, from an alternate history perspective, the Cthulhu Mythos is more of a secret history because despite fictional locations like Arkham, Massachusetts or Miskatonic University, human history pretty much plays out the same way it did in our time and with all the numerous terrors just being background noise. Now, if I'm being honest, Lovecraft's stories are, for a modern audience at least, not that great. Most are written from the perspective of a white, educated gentleman who faint a lot and are now writing down their experiences from whatever terrifying episode they just survived or are about to die from. It's full of purple prose and terrible dialogue, which even Stephen King felt the need to call Lovecraft out on in his memoirs on writing. Also, Lovecraft was extremely racist, even for the time period he hailed from. Generally for Lovecraft, anyone who wasn't a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant was barely seen as civilized, and if you happen to have brown skin, then you're practically a beast to Lovecraft. These beliefs are evident in his writings, especially since most of the great Old Ones cultists come from the oppressed groups. It's no wonder, then, that recent Lovecraft-inspired works, like Winter Tide by Ruthanna Emrys, addresses this terrible legacy by showing the mythos from the point of view of people who would be considered the enemy in Lovecraft's stories, and instead paints them in a more sympathetic light. Because if the good guys treat you like crap, how bad can the alien space demons really be? All that aside, what I think fascinates readers about Lovecraft is the kind of fear his stories elicit. In Lovecraft's universe, humans are insignificant in the grand scheme of things. We are short-lived beings, and our racist presence in the larger universe will barely be worthy of a footnote in the cosmic history books. Even the eldritch abominations that haunt the abyss in Lovecraft's universe aren't particularly hostile to humanity. We are just so unimportant to them, they don't care whether we live or die. Much like the ant you step on when you walk outside the house. So of course, alternate historians are obsessed with Lovecraft. Seriously, when I first started researching this video, I was overwhelmed by the number of alternate history works inspired by Lovecraft or set in his Cthulhu mythos. So please don't treat this as an exhaustive list. To begin with, I found on Ukrania several stories showcasing an alternate career path for Lovecraft. For example, in Peter Cannon's The Lovecraft Chronicles, Lovecraft finally finds that success that eluded him in our timeline, which includes a brief career in Hollywood and fighting in the Spanish Civil War with George Orwell. Then there's the sidewise nominated Pirate Utopia by Bruce Sterling, where Lovecraft cameos as a publicist trying to sell futurism to America. Well, let's be honest, most of you only care about the stories that actually have sentient murder slime. Well, to be honest, there are several more of those as well. Some notable examples are A Colder War by Charlie Strauss, where the Americans and Soviets make use of Lovecraftian magic and entities to wage the Cold War. More recently, there was After the End of the World by Jonathan L. Howard, book two of the Carter and Lovecraft series, which is technically set in a timeline where the Germans won World War II, but where Lovecraftian monsters also run amok. You also have the short story Hottentots by Paul D. Filippo, collected in his anthology The Steampunk Trilogy, where a naturalist encounters Lovecraftian entities and generally comes out of it looking like a complete ass. Heck, even an Elseworlds version of Batman grappled with the great old ones in Batman The Dune That Came to Gotham, which I haven't read, but man do I really want to. Of course, this is just mainstream examples. The online community has also published works inspired by Lovecraft. Prominent examples include the Valdrin's Green Antarctica, where Antarctica never glaciates, and the humans who make it their home take civilization some dark directions. Then there is RVB O'Malley's Ad Astra per Aspera timeline, a grim dark space opera, and his Vivere Militare Est timeline, an alternate World War II story where the supernatural exists, both of which are heavily influenced by Lovecraft's stories. Alternate cartographers have also found ways to work Lovecraft into their maps. One of my favorite alternate cartographers, Bruce Munro, references Lovecraft in a lot of his maps, sometimes directly, like with this map of North America after Great Old Ones returned to Earth, or subtly by tiny references in the scenarios or footnotes that go along with his maps. Catching them all is half the fun of enjoying Bruce's maps, and before you ask, yes, I do hope to cover one of his maps in a future video. I could keep listing examples, but I think it's time I actually answer the question posed in this video's title, which is, why are alternate historians obsessed with Lovecraft? 
Well, I have a few theories. The first is that Lovecraft, despite his less than stellar writing ability and terrible ideas about race, is a great world builder. All of his stories, even though set entirely in a small New England town, paint a picture of a much bigger universe that our minds can barely comprehend. And it is full of brain-stealing aliens, ancient civilizations, and untold power available for those mad enough to seek it. Alternate historians would kill to have the skill to create such worlds. Second, although Lovecraft himself would probably deny this, he was a rather pessimistic fellow. A happy ending wasn't something you were going to find in one of his stories. Even if the hero lived through the thing terrorizing them, they certainly wouldn't be completely sane anymore. Alternate historians as a group have a similar problem. Just look at how much of our beloved stories either end with a genocidal maniac conquering the world, a brutal slaveocracy keeping millions of people in chains, or a nuclear war incinerating the lives of men, women, and children across the world. Meanwhile, more optimistic timelines receive a knee-jerk, it's not plausible. Personally, if Lovecraft was around today, I think he would appreciate alternate historians' outlook on history. Finally, the philosophy that underpins alternate history, that no historical event is predetermined, is very Lovecraftian when you come to think about it. Lovecraft, with his belief of cosmic indifference, didn't see the work of humans as all that important in the face of the infinite universe. Thus, when alternate historians can change history by turning around the outcome of one tiny event, we are implicitly accepting the fact that our own timeline is built on random chance. There is no grand divine plan, we aren't building to anything greater than ourselves, and we are just as likely to be snuffed out of existence by our own stupidity, much less a demon sultan at the center of the universe. Which is quite scary when you come to think of it. Or, then again, I could have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I hope everyone had a happy Halloween. If you get the chance, go pick up some Lovecraft. He's a great world builder who has inspired creators of all kinds. Just try not to take his views on race or the significance of humanity all that seriously. Well, that is a say on the subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrich, the Alternate Historian. Happy Halloween, everybody.